How's it going lovely bunch of bakers? Hope you're having a great day so far. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm making fatayr, which are kind of like Middle Eastern mini pies. So let's go to the kitchen and get started. They are little snack-sized breads, filled with various fillings, from lentils and veggies to cheese and meat. Made with a soft yeast dough, they have a nice light texture that works well with many different ingredients. And they come in a few different shapes. There is one where the filling is completely enclosed in dough, and there's another one which is a simple flat disc, and that is commonly topped with za'atar. Today, I'll show you how to make two options. One is filled with spiced beef, and the other one is filled with cheese. And they both taste awesome, I couldn't get enough of these things. So let me show you how to make these so you can enjoy them too. First things first, let's look at the ingredients. For the dough, we'll need some white bread flour, water, full fat yogurt, yeast, salt, and olive oil. It is a simple dough, but it has a great texture and a great taste. Moving on to the beef filling, we'll need some ground beef, you can also use ground lamb if you want, we'll need some chopped onions, chopped tomatoes, some chili paste which is optional, tomato paste, salt, pepper, paprika and some sumac. Sumac is a very citrusy spice, it has a very unique flavour and it works great here. You can of course adjust these fillings to your liking. When it comes to the cheese filling, I'm using some feta, some grated mozzarella, chopped parsley, dried mint, nigella seeds, also known as onion seeds. These also have a very specific flavor. You can swap the dried mint for oregano and swap the seeds for something else. Finally, we'll need an egg to bind it all together. When it comes to the equipment, we'll need a couple of trays lined with nonstick paper, we'll need a bowl for mixing, scales, a dough scraper, a temperature probe, and a rolling pin. Okay, let's start the process. First things first, let's get the easy part out of the way. Let's make the fillings. Starting with the cheese filling. In a bowl, combine the parsley, the nigella seeds, the dried mint, the egg, the grated mozzarella, and the crumbled feta. You want to mix it and make it as smooth as you can. At this point, I realized that my spatula is not going to be good enough for the job. So I swapped it for a fork, and it worked out really well. Simply mash all the ingredients together until it's more or less smooth. You basically want the filling to be more spreadable than crumbly. Okay, I'll transfer it to a smaller bowl, cover it up and leave it in the fridge for later. Now we can move on to the beef filling, which works similarly to the cheese one. Combine the onions, the tomatoes, the salt, the pepper, the sumac, the paprika, the tomato paste, the chili paste, and then give it a good mix before you add the beef. Whenever I'm making a meat mix like this, I always like to mix all the other ingredients before I add the meat. I feel that it makes the job easier, more efficient. And once I added the beef, this time I went with the fork straight away. Again, you want to mash the ingredients until they're more or less a paste. Spreadable, not crumbly. I'll transfer this to a smaller bowl, cover it up and leave it in the fridge for later, next to the cheese filling. Okay, first things first, temperature control. My kitchen is around 23 degrees Celsius or 74 degrees Fahrenheit. We are aiming for final dough temperature of around 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit. The reason why I'm using room temperature water is because after handling this dough, it will warm up by a couple degrees, hitting our target. And of course this is a no-need dough, as all of my other recipes are posted this year, and all the recipes I'm going to post in the future. Kneading dough when making small batches at home is totally unnecessary. One single fold will be enough to develop the gluten in this dough. And to make the dough, in a large bowl, combine the water, the yeast, the salt, the yogurt and the olive oil. Give it all a good mix, you want to dissolve the salt completely. Then, add the flour and mix it to a dough. You want to ensure that the oil is distributed evenly throughout the dough. So once you have mixed it up with a scraper, just finish it off by hand. And this is how it should look, a little bit loose, a little bit sticky, but that's normal. Pop it in a clean bowl and take its temperature. We were aiming for 25 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius is what we got. If your dough came out warmer, simply shorten the folding interval. I'm gonna pop this dough in the fridge for 30 minutes before giving it a fold. As the dough cools down, the outside of it will cool down sooner. As we fold the dough, the cold outside part will be folded into the middle, distributing that temperature evenly and cooling the dough down. So if your dough is too warm, simply fold it sooner. To perform the fold, place the dough out on the table with the smooth side down, flatten it out, fold the edge over the middle, going around in a circle until the reach point where it started, then tighten it against the table, finally you can pick it up and pinch the seam together at the bottom, then pop it back into the bowl, leave it in the fridge to cold ferment for 24 hours. But if you don't want to wait the whole day, you can make these on the same day. Simply do the bulk fermentation at room temperature for around 2 hours or until the dough has doubled in size before continuing. I left mine in the fridge for around 22 hours and it has puffed up beautifully. Now we can weigh it and divide it into 18 equal pieces to make 18 little fatayr. 
And trust me, these things will disappear quickly. 18 is not that many. This is the standard amount of dough that I use in most of my recipes. So this will be enough for like two very hungry people. Okay, after dividing, let's shape these into little balls. And it's just a miniature version of the fold. Flatten the dough, then fold the edge over the middle, go around in a circle until the reach point where it started. And in fact, you don't even need to tighten these against the table. Simply pinch the seam together and that's the dough ball done. And now you just have to repeat it 17 more times. So because we have two fillings, I'm going to split them up in two different trays and I'm going to bake them one at a time. When I'm making things like these, I like to place the dough balls on trays or on plates so I can move them around more easily. That way, I can work with the first batch and place the other one in the fridge so it doesn't overproof. And speaking of proofing, now is final proofing time. Take the fillings out of the fridge to let them warm up a little bit. It should help with a more even bake. The final proof should take around an hour and a half. And just for reference, my kitchen is still at 22 degrees Celsius or 72 degrees Fahrenheit. If your kitchen is warmer, it will take you less time. If you did the bulk fermentation at room temperature, it will take even less time. But if it's cooler, of course it will take longer. You want them to almost double in size. During the final hour of fermentation preheat the oven, 250 degrees Celsius, 480 Fahrenheit, fan on. I'm also preheating my baking steel because my oven doesn't have a bottom heating element and the steel really helps me out. Okay, these things are puffed up beautifully, they are ready to be shaped. I'll put one of the plates in the fridge whilst I'm working with the other one. And we'll start with the beef filling, the dough for which will be shaped in little square shapes. And here's a little trick for reducing the floury mess. Roll each dough bowl in a bowl of flour to coat the whole surface. That way you don't need to dust the table. But of course if the dough starts sticking, do dust it a little bit more. Okay, first step is to roll the dough into little discs. It should be around 10 centimeters or 4 inches in diameter. Try and make them all pretty much the same size. But don't worry if they're not perfect, it's all about the taste here. Okay, next up comes the filling. Using a teaspoon, portion it out equally between all the discs of dough. And if you're curious, the filling to dough ratio is almost 1 to 1 here. Okay, after spooning on the filling, spread it out a little bit. But do leave a gap around the edge. About 2.5 centimeters or 1 inch is okay. And never mind what I'm doing with the first one here. I came up with a better way when I was doing the second one. So to finish the shaping, fold the dough over the filling. First do the top and bottom, then do the sides. Finally, pinch the corners together. And there you go. That's how you make a square shaped fatire. And again, don't worry if it's a little bit wonky. Just a little bit of practice, you'll get them right. And if you're not happy with how they look, you'll definitely love how they taste. Okay, let's move on with the second shape. Once again, coat all the dough balls in flour, but this time, don't roll them into circles. Roll them into little oval shapes. The shaping of this is kind of similar to the P-Day I posted earlier, and also kind of resembles Georgian Hachapuri. And actually, let's talk about that for a second. I've stopped adding country names to the recipes, because there will be always someone screaming that I'm insulting their culture, and telling me that I'm not making it the way their grandma used to make it. The thing is that bread recipes, they are not special. Everyone's inspired by everyone else. And nothing is as original as people think it is. I just like making bread, that's all. And I will make it the way I want to make it. And I'm going to use the ingredients that are available to me. And I'm not going to limit myself just because someone told me so. And you should not either. Okay, rant over. You get the shaping. It's the same as the first one, but instead of folding over four edges, you just do the sides and then pinch the ends together. I've placed them on trays lined with nonstick paper and greased with olive oil. The oil will make the bottoms nice and toasty. I'll bake them one by one, but I'm not refrigerating the other one, because they will bake quite quickly. Okay, let's get these first bad boys in the oven. They'll take only 10 minutes to bake. As soon as you close the oven door, turn the temperature down to 230 degrees Celsius or 445 degrees Fahrenheit. This will ensure they are fully baked before they get too dark. Depending on your oven, your baking times may vary. Just judge it by the color. Once it's nicely browned all over, it's done. Let's leave these on a rack to cool down and get the other ones in. They should take about the same amount of time. If the crust is not coloring evenly, turn the tray around halfway through the bake. Or if they seem to be taking longer, move them closer to the heating element. You know how it is. You have to make it work with your equipment. Everyone's oven is different. But there you have it. That's how you make two types of fataya. And I'm definitely butchering that pronunciation. But never mind that. Let's have a closer look at these bad boys. You can see here what I mean about the toasted bottom. The filling has a nice bright red color, they have a beautiful shape, they tear open very easily, the dough is nice and soft and delicate, and they taste amazing. The sumac adds a great punch to the flavor. When it comes to the cheesy one, well, who doesn't love a bit of cheese? The filling is soft and tender, and the nigella seeds add a very unique flavor to it. These things were gone within 30 minutes. So what do you think this recipe? Have you made fatire before? 
let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more just like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.